Judy Aldwin. I've spent the pandemic trying to get better at Character Animator, which is an animation program that I really love. So I'd like to share a few hacks with you. There's a lot of things you can do with Character Animator, but I'm just going to share a few hacks with you that I found to be useful. So let me just turn the landing strip lights on here. I've got to set my rest pose. I've got to look at the screen, set my rest pose, and we're ready. Well, you see a very cute boy and his goat. I actually have I actually have a little dog that looks reminds me of this goat. So what this boy can do is he can lean this way and that. He can smile. I haven't rigged the mouth at all because I wanted to focus on things you can do with a goat. All right, so this boy can pet the goat. The goat can raise his head like this. whole body can be dragged up and okay. little tail wag I have triggers over here just a few triggers um, so I've created a swap set for the eyelids so you can see them here um, there's squint. It's a little subtle gesture. And down, where I can look at the goat. Okay, um, so let's take a look at the rig. All right, so what you see is three top level layers they're all on the same they're kind of on the same level they're all in character the character folder in photoshop um, you can also use illustrator which i highly recommend because then you wouldn't have to do all this painting but i love to paint so that therefore i take extra time to do this and um also, you'll see the background layer here. You can put the background layer as another puppet, which is probably what I'd recommend. But you can also put it in this, in the character uh, folder. Just give it a crown so that it's independent. So I wanted to talk about independence. Independence is very important in character era. Animator. In Photoshop, it's indicated with a plus, and in Character Animator, it's indicated by a crown. So when you import a file, Illustrator or Photoshop, if you've indicated that it's independent with a plus, the, the layer that is independent with a plus, then it converts to a crown in, uh, in Character Animator. Okay, so I've put an independence icon on the background so that... Uh, the background will stay still while I move the boy around. Otherwise, the background would move with the boy. Okay. My goat is some type. You can put some type behind the boy if you want. And you can do different things. So that's independent. Uh, and in my goat, I've got the transform behavior. Uh, I select a transform. So I've got to have it move it in from, from the right. So the boy and goat is, um, is independent because he's going to be moving around independent of the, of the uh, background. Okay, so if I scroll up in boy and goat, you'll see goat, head, and body. Okay, the goat is on the same level as the head and the body, and the goat is on top. The goat level layer is on top because I want the goat to appear, to do actions in front of the boy's face. 
and sometimes you want to do that, you want you can also put your arms layer on the same level as the goat, as the same level as the head and the body, if you want your arms to be in front of the face, arms and hands to be in front of the face. As long as you mark it independent. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Here's the, the goat layer. So it's centered in the center of the body of the torso. So that and I put the dragger here so that when I pull a dragger up and down, it'll rotate around the center. Okay, so if I, if I twirl that open on the goat, you'll see I've got a hand layer here, which attaches here. This way I can, he can pet the, pet the goat. There's a goat face um, folder in which I have a goat ear which attaches here, and that, that's got a dangle on it. Okay, so importantly, over here, uh, in, under a layer uh, to the right of your screen, you'll see a bunch of things that you can do with a layer. Scaling, rotating, opacity, etc. Okay. So what's important in this demo is that you want the goat ear to hinge rather than weld. Okay, you've got these other two options, weld and free. You want it to hinge because you want it to, when he raises his face, you want the, the ear to kind of stay down and dangle. You don't want the ear to move up with the face, which is what you'll, it'll do if you weld it. Weld is the default. So you have to be very careful with the layers that you want to have this hinge action because it'll drive you crazy if you can't figure out why. When you're dragging it, it's not doing what you want. You've got to hinge it. Okay. So actually, the whole goat layer, which is this whole body, you can see does with the blue line that that's the whole body. That is hinged, so that it can rotate around the center, like I just talked about. You want it to hinge, not weld. So you want the You want the goat layer, which contains all these other layers inside of it, you want that to hinge. The hand layer, I've got it welded because, I mean, I suppose you could hinge it, but it kind of looks kind of broken if you do that. So I've got it welded here. The goat ear is hinged. And let me see. The front legs are welded because I just wanted them to be kind of limp, floppy, dangly. And the back legs are, are welded too. And you see I've got them attached here. And they dangle here. Goat tail is behind the goat body. And I've got it fixed here so that, that it doesn't look like it's separating. And that's hinged. So I've got more freedom to move that around. Okay, so that I think that takes care of the, the the goat layer. So the head and body, these are the boy of the boy. Okay, so the head, the head does not have independence. Neither does the bo the body. Okay, the head has one profile. Usually, there's you can put several in there, and I just have one for the purposes of this demo. And I've got just two folders inside that and a face background. So these two and the eyes, the eyebrows, I've, been to, I've tagged over here in the eyebrows. So you can do it separately because if you want, sometimes you can have the eyebrows moving separately if you want. But I've got them both tagged here. So they're all in the same layer. Eyelids. I have a folder for eyelids. I put the blank layer in the eyelid layer um, because I've got masks in here for the eyelids, different eyelid shapes. And this one is like, this is the lid. So if I mark it independent, you can see the outline. That's what that would look like. Okay. 
but you don't want it independent. You want the blink layer independent. So most people, when they rig their eyes, they'll put the, a blink in each of the eyes. And you could do that because then you could have it winking and stuff like that. Or mo even moving separately, but I just put both eyelids in the sink. I put, put the blink layer, which is both eyes, you see, in the eyelid folder. Okay, so, but the left, the eyes themselves are rigged conventionally. I'll hide the face background so you can see. So here's the eyelids. Hide those. So the important thing to remember with the eyes, let me see if I can open that up a little bit so you can see. I put the highlights in each of these eye folders, left eye, right eye. I put the highlights on a separate layer over, and that doesn't have an independence, highlights over the, the eye, because the highlights don't generally move with the eye, but, you know, you could, you know, put the highlights in the left pupil in the same folder, and then, you know, it would move the eye if you wanted it to. So, let's see. It's very important to tag the pupil as independent. The pupil, in this case, also includes the iris. What it means is simply that the pupil is that spot on the eyeball that moves around. And that is the only thing in the eye folder that has an independence. It has a plus sign in Photoshop which converts to a, a crown in, in, um, in Character Animator. Now, if you forget in Photoshop to put a plus sign, you can, you can just add it here, okay? But you really don't want to do that because if you have to go back to Photoshop and make changes, then you have to bring it back in, then sometimes it won't, it won't remember that and you have to re-rig it and it's just a mess. So just... Try to remember in Photoshop to name your layers correctly. Uh, put plus signs where on the parts that you want to move, and then you won't run into problems later. Okay, so I've got left eye, right eye. All right. And so the important thing, like, like I said before, is put... Uh, is put independence on the blink layer of the eyelids. None of the others, none of the others need that because they're not moving around. They're not moving. Okay. So I will close that up and I will put that. What I've done with the mouth, and I'll hide the face back background so you can see what I've done. I selected this entire jaw area and copied it into. Um, the mouth layer. I like to do that because I like to uh, modify the whole shape of the jaw to make it look realistic. Now some people just just you know they just do different mouths and they add like a chin behavior. So this the mouth these mouth layers are tagged over here automatically if you label them correctly. It'll automatically neutral show up over here on the right and smile will show up here on the right. That's, that's nice. You can also add more shapes, more mouth expressions to this folder and include them over here in a swap set you know, under triggers. And the body this time only contains the torso because they put the arms up here in the goat layer. Typically you'll have arms and legs in the body layer, but I've figured out that you could put the arms in the top layer over the head and the body so that they can appear and just make them independent so they can attach. Okay, so there you go. If you have other tips and tricks to share with me, please share them in the comments. Thanks, and I hope this was helpful.